Today I have a fascinating question for you. How can we combine the power of AI with the physical knowledge of the system to enhance the fault diagnosis or predictive maintenance? In this video, we are going to see one of the three main methodologies that I developed during my PhD. This particular method blends in the AI with the physical knowledge of the system to improve the fault isolation capabilities. Imagine improving the performance of the AI without needing a lot of data. If that sounds intriguing to you, stay tuned. Before we get started, let me share a bit about my PhD journey with you. I completed my PhD in 2024, during which I published total six papers, among which three are journal papers, such as neurocomputing and engineering applications of artificial intelligence. By this video, I'm going to explain each of my research paper in a brief for the reader or interested people to replicate the paper. All the codes related to all these methodologies are available in my GitHub, which is linked in the description below. Also, if you missed the earlier parts of my thesis, don't forget to check them in the I button on the top. The main goal of this methodology is to incorporate the physical knowledge of the system into the AI so that we can reduce the amount of data dependency of the AI model. The hybrid approach not only saves time and resources, but also enhances the accuracy and reliability of the fault diagnosis method. Make sure to watch till the end of this video because I have a special surprise for you. Now let's roll the intro. Here we have divided the methodology section into three categories based on three main methodological contribution. First is bond graph convolution neural network or BGCNN where we use bond graph as feature engineering step, which helps us to generate fault sensitive feature to train a CNN model. Next, we use self-supervised learning method to leverage large amount of unlabeled data. Finally, to generate a model agnostic local explanation for the prediction given by the deep learning model, we developed BGXAI method, also known as bond graph and explainable AI method. First, we'll look at the main idea behind the BGCNN method or formalism. The goal is to reduce the amount of labeled data by training the AI model with fault sensitive feature. In pure AI based method, there is a training set consisting of various sensor measurement from the system and the corresponding fault labels. The AI model is directly trained using the raw sensor measurement data or by extracting some statistical feature. The main problem with sensor data is it is not very sensitive to faults and it is more sensitive to changing operating conditions. Hence, we propose to use residual signals instead, which are generated from the diagnostic bond graph model as input to train the AI model because they are more sensitive to faults in the system and not much sensitive to change in operating condition. Here is an example from simulation data to show the difference between the two. In the left hand side is the sensor space and the right hand side is the residual space which shows the distribution of various fault data. It is clear that in the residual space, the faults can be easily isolated compared to the sensor space. Now it is clear that using residual signal as input to the neural network is a better choice. Generally, residual signals rely on input parameter values, sensor values and actuator inputs of a system. These signals are used in a trained black box model to identify fault classes during the inference time. However, a big challenge arises when observing the trajectory of residual signals during the fault introduction. When a fault shows a dynamic pattern, as you can see here in the pink region for the residual signal, it surpasses the threshold, returns within and then exceeds the threshold persistently during the fault. Using a neural network model with a single residual signal at each instant can lead to false alarm. Despite knowing there is a fault, the neural network might output no fault due to the dynamic behavior and lack of temporal dependency. For this particular section, if you are feeling little bit difficulty to understand, please leave a comment in, in this video so that I can explain it more. To overcome these limitations, we propose using a sliding window based approach. 
instead of providing a single time instant as input, we feed a window of data to the neural network, preserving temporal dependency. This results in a two-dimensional input data structure, as you can see here, with each row representing a time instant and a column representing multiple residual signals. By incorporating this sliding window method, we aim to mitigate the challenge associated with temporal dependency. Now comes another big question that what AI models should we choose? Traditional methods such as support vector machines, random forest, k-nearest neighbor face limitation when handling two-dimensional data while preserving temporal dependency. As a result, our focus narrows down to either using CNN or RNN. In our method, we opt for CNN as they are parallel computing advantage. Thanks to parameter sharing, CNN can achieve similar accuracy with much fewer parameters, resulting in a, in a smaller model size compared to recurrent neural networks. Now let's break down the entire process in a schematic uh, diagram. Beginning with the real system, we collect sensor measurement. These measurements are then input into the diagnostic bond graph model, generating residual signals. Following this, the residual signals undergo pre-processing through window length segmentation in sliding window segments. We then normalize these signals, creating a set of labeled data. This labeled data is utilized to train the CNN model in offline phase where X represents the multidimensional time series input data and Y corresponds to the fault labels. The model is trained using categorical cross entropy loss function. After the model is trained, we transition to the online fault detection and identification method. In the real time fault detection, up to the pre processing steps, everything is same. Then the obtained residual signals are pre processed and fed into the trained CNN model to predict different fault classes. This encapsulates the fundamental summary of our proposed method for BGCNN. Next, we'll devil into the impact of various fault types on the performance of the developed FDI method. We also addresses the research gap in existing hybrid fault detection and isolation. Previous work often overlook the effect of different fault types on FDI performance. Our study, we aim to bridge this gap and shed more lights into this topic. For instance, we specifically investigate the influence of incipient faults compared to step faults. Additionally, we explore the consequence of presence of a single fault versus a multiple simultaneous fault in the system. In our case, we focus on considering two simultaneous fault, treating them as a distinct class for the machine learning model. To illustrate, if we initially have three fault classes, let's say F1, F2 and F3, introducing simultaneous fault creates three more classes, F1, F2, F2, F3 and F1, F3. This results in total of six fault classes for the AI model to be trained on. However, the drawback is the requirement for historical data from all these classes to ensure effective model training, even in limited quantities. Moving on to the evaluation matrix, we opted not to use accuracy but F1 score as it provides a balanced assessment by considering the trade-off between false positive rate and negative rate. This score ranges from 0 to 1, where 0 indicates worst performance and 1 signifies the best. On this slide, we'll discuss a pedagogical example involving a DC motor. This example serves as a demonstration of the application for our developed method. It comprises of two main parts, an electrical component and a mechanical part. For the DC motor, we derived a diagnostic bond graph model establishing two separate one junctions, the left side for the electrical and right side for the mechanical. The two junctions are linked by a gyrator element denoted as K. In the electrical one junction, the input is reading measured by the current sensor, while in the mechanical one junction, the input is the reading measured by the angular velocity. Both junctions generate two residuals representing the analytical redundancy relations. For the electrical part, this relation resembles Kirchhoff's voltage law and for the mechanical part, it mirrors Newton's force balance. This result in generation of two residuals and two uncertain residuals capturing the parameter uncertainties. Now let's discuss the outcomes of applying BGCNN method in the same case. We simulated seven fault classes, including two simultaneous fault. Out of eight introduced faults, three were sensor fault and the rest were parameter fault. One scenario had a no faults. Analyzing the fault signature matrix, 
we found that using structural equations isolated only two faults while the five remain unresolved. A scatter plot analysis in sensor and residual space revealed the challenges in distinguishing fault classes in the sensor space, whereas the residual space shows already a clear separation without using any algorithm. We compared convolution neural network with shallow machine learning algorithm both trained using the residual signal. CNN performed well with few training samples but as sample exceeded 128 per fault class, random forest model outperformed the CNN. Despite this, we choose CNN for its accuracy when we have only limited amount of labeled data available. We conducted also an ablation study for BGCNN method isolating individual parameter to understand their impact on accuracy. It is mainly affected by following four parameters, type of fault, presence of simultaneous fault, type of input data, and size of the window length. Looking at the fault types, step fault had higher F1 score while incipient fault were more challenging due to their gradual nature. Next, we explored the influence of single versus multiple simultaneous fault. Surprisingly, model performed better with multiple simultaneous fault. This is likely due to increased amount of data which we used for training. Switching to input data, we compared using residual signals against raw sensor data. The BGCNN method consistently outperformed the raw CNN data across different training sample sizes. In the pre-processing stage, we examined the impact of window length during segmentation. Evaluating six different window lengths, we found that larger windows performed better usually. So now let's talk about the surprise I promised you all. For a limited time, I am making my priority DM feature absolutely free for all my subscribers. This is your chance to have direct access to me for detailed discussions, advice on your research project or any other burning question you might have. If it is a quick query, feel free to drop it in the comment box and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. This giveaway is my way of saying thank you for all your support and engagement with the channel. To take advantage, simply click on the link in the description below and use the TopMed platform to connect with me. Thank you again for being part of this amazing community. See you in the next video. Cheers.